Hey folks, I'm Papa Boris, and this is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's going to be long, and it's going to be for a very niche audience. I'm going to do an in-depth analysis of a four-player game of Through the Ages I played a few years ago now to illustrate what I think is an important strategic concept in this game. This is with the base game. This does not involve any of the expansion characters, so we're going to have just the typical base game heroes and wonders. I know by this point probably everybody plays with the expansion, however I think if you are a newer or struggling player it can be good to go over a game with just the base cards before adding in all the expansion content just to lay down some basic ideas. So with that in mind if you're into that kind of thing and got a while to spare, stay a while and listen, let's go ahead and review. I played against strangers on the internet, we got Kermit, I'm going to call this person Texas even though I know the X and the E are backwards, we got Go Big or Go Whore, and then there's me, Boris Stina. So, first round, Kermit grabs the pyramids, makes a lot of sense, this is a pretty good wonder, I think it is the best of the three wonders that were available, some people do like the Colossus, but I, I wouldn't have done anything differently here. We go on to Texas's draft, and Texas grabs the hanging wonders and the leader, perfectly reasonable, although I personally would have taken the Colossus, because the Colossus gives a strength bonus and Caesar gives a strength bonus, so it seems a little bit more on theme. Also, the Colossus gives you a navigation bonus, and Caesar gives you an extra military action, so you're more likely to draw colonies. I would prefer to grab Colossus with Caesar rather than hanging gardens, but I think the hanging gardens is a fine wonder. Nothing wrong with culture and happy faces and a free bit of free food, so it's fine. So then we go on to Gohor, and for his draft, he decides to grab Rich Land and Colossus. This is an interesting play. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't like paying two actions to get one rock. I would have rather taken Aristotle and gotten some free science, but he decides to wait for a different leader, and I don't think that is a horribly unreasonable move. Now for my draft as the fourth player, things are a little bit tricky. I decide to grab the Library of Alexandria and then just a frugality because that's all I've got left that I can take. You can of course wait for a wonder. You could do something like Aristotle and Urban Growth to make it easier to build your first building sooner. This essentially either gives you a rock or a science. If you use your first turn to build a mine and your second turn to build a lab, this saves you a rock. Or you can use your first turn to build a lab, which essentially gives you a science. So that would have been a fair play as well. But I wanted to get that library. Okay, so nothing crazy so far. We're going to find as we go through that some players in this game kind of know what they're doing and some players kind of don't. Anyway, Kermit decides to take a pretty standard first turn. He raises his population and gets a mine. Now he's got nothing left to do except, you know, get cards. He decides to take and uh, take Aristotle and not play him and take urban growth for an extra rock. Personally, I would have just played Aristotle, but I don't hate this idea of taking the urban growth because sometimes as the first player, you don't really have much to do on the next action. So taking an action now to get a rock later is very reasonable. All right, we get to Texas's turn. He starts off by building a mine, playing Caesar, grabbing cultural heritage, and raising his population. This move I'm really not a fan of. Cultural heritage gives you a science in four points, but it takes two actions, one to take it, one to play it. I think the clear move here would have been to take the urban growth because you take it and then it doesn't cost an action to play it. It comes in as part of an action. So this would have been an action for a rock. I think that's better than two actions for a science because let's face it, at this point in the game, the culture doesn't really matter. All right, then we got Gohor. He grabs Homer, very reasonable as he's the only leader available for one action. Although I think it's worth noting that because Hammurabi gives you an extra action essentially, Taking him from two is kind of the same as taking anybody else from one. You just don't get the benefit of his action on, the, on that turn, but the turn that you do it, you're getting the same number of civil actions, so it is worth considering. However, Homer plus Colossus is a very nice combo because the Colossus is a pretty easy wonder to make. It only takes two stages, so it is less likely to be a bother to get this wonder finished before you kick out Homer and slap his happy face onto the wonder that you've built. So anyway, he grabs Homer, and then he takes Engineering Genius for two actions. This move I'm really not a fan of. The problem with this move is that, yes, Engineering Genius is a super sexy card, but if you're paying two actions to take it to get two rocks, it's really just one rock per action, and one rock per action is nothing to be that thrilled about. I mean, hell, look at this. 
He could have just spent two actions taking rich land and urban growth, and that would also have been two rocks for two actions. Now, how many of us are excited to take rich land and urban growth? I don't think very many. So, with Engineering Genius, I know it's the coolest of the Antiquity Yellow cards, but be careful, don't overvalue it. It's really only good, in my opinion, if you get it for one action. If you're paying two actions to get it at that point, it is merely okay. After that, he also takes the Urban Growth, and this is just a flat-out mistake. The reason it's a mistake to take Urban Growth here is that you need to build your mine. So, if you take Urban Growth, you are getting a rock for Urban Growth, but you're losing a rock because you didn't build your mine. So you're getting literally nothing. This is just completely straight-up throwing away an action. So at that point, I could kind of tell that Gohor was not going to be a major competitor in the game. Now, in my turn, I decided to grab Alexander. This is a frisky move. I think most people would probably prefer Hammurabi here to get the extra actions. But I like Alexander. I guess I was going through a phase where I really enjoyed having that extra yellow token. So I put him into play. I build my mine. And then I play Frugality and raise my population. Uh, I know some people like to hold on to their food and stockpile it but i'm a really big fan of avoiding action debt action debt is what i call it when you have an action that you're planning to take at some point so it's kind of like your minus one civil action you're like one civil action in debt so like when you've got food built up here and your population bank is full you're in action debt because you have to at some point later spend the action now that doesn't mean it's correct but i'm just a really big fan of like if there's a thing i know i need to do at some point I tend to prioritize just doing it instead of saving it for later. Now, in this case, there weren't really any great cards to take, but that's just a quick comment about action debt and my own personal biases. Okay, now we go back to Kermit's turn. So Kermit offers an open borders agreement pack to Gohor who accepts it. Just in case you didn't know, this is a good thing to do. This pact is really fantastic because an extra military action lets you not only draw more cards, but also keep more cards, which dramatically increases your flexibility. Now, there is this problem of the attacking player adds two to their strengths. So you can definitely get dicked if you accept this with the wrong person, but Kermit knew what he was doing. He avoided making the pact with Texas because Texas already has an extra military action and a military leader, and he also avoided doing it with me because I potentially, if I don't cash Alexander out also have a military leader so he went with the one person who doesn't have any kind of a military thing I mean Homer sort of but not really it's a bit of a risky move because Gohor is building the Colossus which of course is a military wonder but I think Kermit may have judged that Gohor seems to kind of suck at this game so he thought you know what let's just go for it and I think I would have done the exact same thing then Kermit increases his population builds his lab Finally puts Aristotle into play, and then he kind of has to take a clunker of an action here. He grabs Patriotism. I actually would have taken Rich Land personally and tried to use it later to upgrade a mine or a farm, but he decides to get something that costs an action to play, but gives an extra military action. I think it's a reasonable choice. By the way, in this interface, the first action of the round is always done before you can do anything. It's a little bit strange. So we get the Development of Civil Life. He grabs iron for two actions, which I think is totally reasonable. Though, I think it's worth noting that grabbing Leo or Columbus could also be a good play. Um, but he decides to get his rocks going, which is totally fine. He plays the cultural heritage for the science. And then he grabs Christopher Columbus for later. Alright, now Gohor gets a pretty nice setup here because Gohor gets alchemy for a single action. He builds the engine, uh, uses the engineering genius to build the first stage of the Colossus. He raises his population. He plays Homer. And then he raises his population again and does not take alchemy. I think that's kind of nuts, but I do tend to prioritize science. I think it's also worth noting that not only did he have alchemy here, but he had alchemy and Leo. So he could have just gone crazy with the science and the rocks. I don't understand this turn whatsoever. So Gohor, I think, made another mistake here. If you have a chance to take Leo and Alchemy for one action apiece, I mean, you're kind of crazy not to. All 
All right, so it's my turn. I decide to cash out Alexander for the extra yellow token in my bank, and I'm not saying no to Leo and Alchemy for an action apiece. No, sir, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, sir, ma'am. I also grab Swords, which was a little bit greedy because there is... Um, Okay, so I should actually pause for a second. I used the development of Civil Life to actually build another mine. This is just an opening I'm fond of. I call it the Alexander Mine, where you use your extra yellow token from Alexander to build a mine. This takes the pressure off to have to like get iron um, later on, and you try to make it through the game with four mines. Just a quick note about that and what I did there. Now I'm going to have enough rocks to build the Library of Alexandria if I wish to, but I might, of course, delay it for alchemy. In any case... I grab Swordsman because it's good to, you know, have it for your military later. And also with Leonardo researching things gives you a rock. So it'll be a good thing to have. Uh, anyway, that's that. I then raise my population. I could, of course, have put Leo into play, but Leo doesn't actually do anything at the moment. So I decide to use my resources to take that action out of my action queue. Okay, Kermit grabs Monarchy, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, I actually like, mon like Monarchy a lot. If you have Pyramids for the extra action, and then Monarchy, which gives you one extra action, you have six military actions, and oh, sorry, six civil actions and three military actions, which is an amazing, but it's enough to get through the game, and that takes pressure off later, not having to get the advanced governments. So, like this play a lot. He then pays two actions for Irrigation to fix his food, you know, paying two actions when it's half your turn to take a card is tough. But there's nothing really else amazing for him to get. So I think that was a perfectly fair play. And then he gets started on his pyramids. So he'll be able to finish that next turn if he wishes. All right, Texas Instruments here plays an event. We get uh, Development of Religion. That may be why, actually, I should mention I decided to raise my population. Actually, now that I think about it, it's good to have a free worker available when the starting antiquity events are still in the deck because there's the one that gives you a free worker and the one that gives you a free temple. So if I'd played Leo, I wouldn't have had this worker and I wouldn't have been able to build that temple when that event rolls around. Just something to keep in mind for the early game. Okay, I did this thing where... Um, I paused it during the resolution of the event, and so now the replay system is going to get a little glitchy. All right, let's just um, reload to the beginning of this round. Click through Kermit's turn, and here's Texas. All right, so everyone gets a free temple who has a worker, but he didn't. He takes masonry. I'm not a huge fan of this play because... He only has two science per turn. His wonder is not helping him get science. He doesn't have alchemy or anything. Always be careful with your, what I like to call, science debt. This is science that you're planning to spend but haven't spent yet. He only makes two per turn. He's definitely going to be doing iron because that's a bigger priority than masonry. And so then, you know, when is he actually going to have the science to spare for masonry? This may look like a thing where it's like, oh, this is cheap. I'll just pick it up. But... You don't just ask yourself, how cheap is this? Ask yourself, what is my current science? What's my science production? When am I actually going to play this card? If it's not going to be anytime soon, there's a good chance it's not worth taking the card. And he's got stuff he needs to do. It's not like this was a case where he was, you know, pressed for actions. He's got to grow his population. He's got to put down iron. He's going to upgrade iron. He's got to play Christopher. He's got to spend three actions to build the wonder. I mean, he's got stuff that needs to get done. He decides to research masonry, which I think is nuts because now he's like... A turn away extra from getting his mines upgraded and then builds two stages of the hanging gardens so uh, this is the point where i would start to doubt that texas is a particularly good player because i really think that this whole turn is a bungling mess definitely the move was to research iron upgrade it get your worker out and okay maybe you don't need to put down christopher columbus because you maybe still want the extra military action and the strength from Julius Caesar, there's still a lot of cards left in age one. Maybe you want to wait until you draw a good colony or whatever. Fine. But then, you know, if you want to take masonry, sure. I personally would just take frugality for the free food. But, you know, building the wonder here doesn't really make much sense. He does actually kick out Caesar for Columbus. And then he grabs the printing press. And this is, again, like, when are you actually going to do this printing press? How far are you going to hold back this iron that you spent two actions taking? Oh, he also lost to corruption. Yeah, that definitely shouldn't have happened. There was no reason to go corrupt there. 
All right, go big or go whore finishes the Colossus. So now he's got this great wonder for himself. He grabs Joan. He kicks out Homer. So now he's got a huge strength lead. I did criticize this player's skills, but you know, he wasted an action earlier. But still, no matter how good or bad someone is at the game, you know, if they got military strength, you kind of have to respect it. So he's got five strength all of a sudden, six with the fighting band. Remember that Joan gives you strength for your temple and our temple happy faces. And we got a free temple from the events. So it's a nice combo when you get that free temple event that makes Joan a slightly more appealing hero. And he grabs frugality, which is totally fine. There's nothing else for him to do. And it's on to my turn. So now it's like, oh crap, we got someone with six strength. You don't necessarily need to catch up to them, but you want to make sure that you're not last. So here I play an event and we get some resources, which is actually kind of a struggle because with the extra resources, it's hard to avoid being corrupt and still, you know, do anything else. Um, I finish the wonder because I just got to get it done. I grow my population and then that's it. So at this point, I'm just a sitting duck. One of the nice things is that the age one events aren't that devastating. And I have one of the worst ones, the raid. So I know she's not going to, or she's, my, my opponent's less likely to be able to blow up my buildings. Now there are still other events in there. Obviously besides the raid, there's another raid, a couple of plunders and an enslave, which can make you lose your population. So, you know, it is a concern, but there's not much else I could have done there. So I decided just to just roll with it on this turn and then try to get maybe Swordsman and fix things next turn. All right, so Kermit throws down an event. We all get a couple of science. He increases his population. He grabs the knights for two actions to try to fix his military. He's also been saving his science, by the way. He researches knights, builds a knight, and he does have the medieval army, so he just fixes his, pop his strength in one turn, and he's got five strength all of a sudden, so now he and Gohor are ready to beat up on Texas and myself. Overall, very solid play from Kermit. Okay, Texas finishes the Hanging Garden. He's just now drowning in resources. Still hasn't got his iron down. He's lucky that that science event came up. Without it, he wouldn't have been able to do this. But with it, he does, able, he does get the ability to play iron. He upgrades a mine. And then he raises his population to avoid corruption for the second turn in a row. And he ends it. So now, Texas and I are both sitting ducks. So what does Gohor do? Well... Gohor doesn't have any military events, or at least none he wanted to play, so he just plays an event, which is great. No aggressions on me or Texas. We all get a free population. He pays two actions for iron, which makes sense. He builds a lab so that he starts getting a science up to two, and then he researches iron to get ready to upgrade two mines potentially next turn. Let me check something. Did he... Yeah, he built an age A lab for three rocks. He actually didn't use his urban growth. I it might have been to avoid corruption. I didn't quite see it when it passed. So sorry about that. But that, that may have been why he didn't spend that card. All right, so I grab irrigation. I grab Leo. I research swordsmen, try to fix my military at least somewhat. We raise population here. We build a swordsman. So now if I had a defense card, theoretically I could defend against Gohor with a defense card and one other card i don't have a defense card but gohor doesn't know that sometimes people just don't want to risk it you know playing their military actions and a card instead of playing an event just to then get defended but here i decide to just go ahead and upgrade my other warrior summit four strength just from two swordsmen and now i'm safe from aggressions that's the whole turn and we pass it on to kermit okay so kermit Decides to actually aggress against Texas. He pulls off a plunder. Texas would have needed to have uh, two defense cards to stave this off. It's worth noting that if he hadn't replaced Caesar with Columbus, he would have had two strength instead of one, and he would have had three military actions instead of two, and that would have made him totally safe from aggressions. So perhaps he shouldn't have done that. So Kermit finishes the pyramids. He grabs Code of Laws. This is a bit of an interesting move. It's one area where I'm not a huge fan of what Kermit did because he's already got monarchy here and he only makes two science. So again, it's kind of like a science debt situation. You're already committed to paying eight and that drops you down to one. Then you're going to need three for irrigation. 
So yes, Code of Laws would be nice to have eventually, but it's going to be really difficult for him to play with a science production. What I would have preferred myself is to take mo play Monarchy, which kind of replaces itself action-wise, and then just slap down two actions for either Alchemy or Iron. I tend to prefer Alchemy because I like science, but Iron is also a reasonable move because, you know, getting your minds under control is nice. I think in this case with such low science, I would have definitely taken the Alchemy, though. It's not crazy to go the other way. Anyway, he decides to grab the Code of Laws for later. He researches the government. He grabs Genghis. Genghis, by the way, is a bit of a complex leader. So the thing you have to understand about Genghis is he's not really an aggressive leader. Like, if you play Genghis and then you try to, like, beat everybody up, you're going to have a bad time. I'm not saying that that can't happen. The way you need to think about it, though, is that Genghis is a culture leader. If you're one of the two strongest sibs, you get three culture per turn, which at this point in the game is really phenomenal. That's the main thing. And then he also means you don't need to have research knights. Now, Kermit has research knights, but if you don't have knights, Genghis essentially lets you count your swordsmen as knights. So you're like getting a science loan. You don't need to research knights until later in the game in age two when cavalry men come up, which are a much better cavalry technology than knights are because they can use all of the final tactics in the game and knights cannot. So this is a culture move. He already has the knight, so it's not really the science loan aspect of it. Here, then for his last action, he actually puts down Genghis to replace Aristotle and he decides to raise his population instead of taking rich land. That's a perfectly reasonable move. And then he also makes another warrior. So now he's tied with Gohor. So on his turns, he'll be getting the benefits of any strength-based events that these guys put in there. All right, so Texas cashes out Columbus. I know this interface doesn't show that very well, but he gets a developed territory for some science and some pips. He grabs St. Peter's to fix his happy faces, takes alchemy, which is perfectly fine. And he researches alchemy, so he's getting ready to upgrade his labs and then maybe build this wonder at some point to fix his happy faces. Now, this is a classic combination. Hanging Gardens, St. Peter's, and then you wait in the base game for Michelangelo. Obviously, if you're playing with the expansion, you need to check to see if Michelangelo's in the game. The digital interface lets you do that. So if you have Michelangelo and St. Peter's and Hanging Gardens, you're going to make a ton of culture, and it's very obvious that this is what Texas is going for here. But he is still at one strength, so the other two people can just beat him up willy-nilly. Now, this time, Gohor does have it. So I'm lucky he didn't have it that one turn where I was at one strength, because it would have really sucked. But here, since I fixed my strength and Texas didn't, Texas gets enslaved. Gohor gets free rocks and food. He gets monarchy for his first action. I am not a fan of this move. The... The issue is that, yes, it would be good to fix your actions, but it's a lot of science, and he doesn't make very much science. And we have two critical technologies here, alchemy and swordsman, both of which are really fantastic. So what I would have done here is I would have just upgraded my mines three times, which he can do because he has this rich land. And then I would have taken alchemy or swordsman. If you want, you can upgrade your mines just twice and then take alchemy and swordsman. But me, I want to spend my resources, and I, there's no way in hell I would have spent two actions for Monarchy here. He does decide to upgrade one of his mines and then raise his population. Notice now he is corrupt, unless he spends two rocks to make another warrior that he probably doesn't need, which he does. It would have been better, in my opinion, if he wanted extra strength to just get Swordsman and upgrade his existing warriors instead of spending a population. But he does have the Legion, so now he's up to eight strength. He's threatening me again. He can now womp on me. And of course, if Texas decides to fix his strength finally, then I'm going to be in some serious trouble. All right, so I finally get alchemy going and I raise my lab. So now with Leo's help, I am getting a very hefty science production. Two for the lab, one for Leo, one for the library. And it only costs me one worker, which is fantastic. But there is this problem that I am vulnerable to Gohor. So what I decide to do here is build another swordsman with my remaining rocks. I'm not going to dick around. Let's just be safe. And let's make sure that Texas is the one who's getting whomped on. I grab iron. I can actually research it with my fantastic science production and then get really good rocks. Now, this is not necessarily a move that you have to make, but the cards are kind of slim pickings. I already have alchemy and swordsman. I don't want to commit the actions or the rocks to making the great wall and reserves. You know, it's 
two actions for two rocks or two food. I wasn't thrilled about that either. So sometimes, you know, I will do the Alexander mine and just run it the whole game. In this case, I thought, hey, let's take the opportunity maybe to just actually make eight rocks per turn instead of four rocks per turn. And I do take the reserves because there was nothing else I could really do with that action, literally. All right, so we move on and it's Kermit's turn. All right, so Kermit plays an event. Notice, by the way, we're kind of slow. A lot of the times, events weren't being played. We just now finished the Age A events with Age 2 almost around the corner. Keep this in mind that you shouldn't just be blindly throwing events down. If the event is not advantageous to you, it's worth considering not to play it because when you don't play an event, all the stuff that other people have been playing is going to come around slower. And that can be really valuable. If there is some stuff here for like the strongest players... You know, even a like middling event that like is only giving you a small benefit might not be worth the pain of all those strength based events coming around a turn sooner. All right, so we all get some free stuff. Did I do it again? I did it again. If you pause the replay while an event is open, the game hitches. Luckily, the interface does let you fix that issue. So we get our free stuff. He grabs drama. Now, I want to point this out. This is an important play. Like, it's one of those, you can tell this is a good player kind of a plays. Why drama? For a long time, I played this game, and I did not understand this technology. I mean, it's two culture and a happy face. A temple is one culture and a happy face. So it's just one extra culture compared to a temple, but you have to take an action to play it. You have to spend three science to research it, and you have to pay an extra rock to build it. So you're paying two extra actions, three extra science, and an extra rock just for one extra culture. That seems idiotic, right? Well, the reason that you might want to take drama is that it sets you up later for leaders. Now, if you're playing with the expansion, of course, you got to check what leaders are in the game. The presence or absence of certain leaders makes drama more or less valuable. But in the base game, or if these leaders are appearing in your game with the expansion, Shakespeare has a thing with theaters if you can also build libraries. Now, this requires a lot. You got to have the workers to spare for all these theaters and libraries, and you also got to make sure that your military is up to par so that you don't get whomped on when you invest all these workers and into your theaters and libraries. More simply is Bach. Bach is a really strong leader because he gives two culture right off the bat and he makes all your theaters produce an extra culture and he makes them cheaper and he can even upgrade things into theaters. So if you got the event in this game, which we did, that gives a free temple, then later you can upgrade that temple into a drama with Bach. And then get sick-ass culture. In age three, there's Charlie Chaplin, who benefits from theaters. And in the expansion, there are two leaders. There's Ian Fleming and Marlene, both of which benefit from theaters. So if these are in the game, an early drama is a really efficient way to set yourself up to generate a lot of culture, even if the face value of the technology doesn't actually seem all that meaningful. He decides to get it going right away, which is perfectly fine. He does have the strength lead, so, you know, why not? Notice that he is, by the way, getting the three bonus culture from Genghis because he's tied with me for second place after Gohor, and when you're the first player, you break ties. So on his turn, which is when it counts as strength, he is considered the second strongest civilization. So he builds this. He starts getting his culture going. He grabs the breakthrough for some science, which makes sense because the science production kind of sucks. He takes the rich land to help upgrade irrigation later. All perfectly fine moves. Now, it is worth considering taking Swordsman here. This is, I think, as we'll see later, Kermit's weakness in the game. I don't think he appropriately values military cards. And we get a little inkling of that here where he prefers to leave the Swordsman alone. Now, he doesn't need it right now, and waiting for Rifleman is perfectly reasonable. So I don't think it's a wrong play to take rich land, especially because he is sitting at baseline rock and food production and getting that upgraded better would be helpful but just something to keep in mind so now he's crushing it he is perfectly strong no one can threaten him he's making six culture per turn basically oh he's also fixed all of his actions he has six of the civil and three military plus one for this open borders agreement and if he could just get his rock situation sorted out and his food he is just flying really high so again just really solid play from this player Texas, on the other hand, a little bit of a different story over here. So we are now trying to finish the St. Peter's Basilica and get Michelangelo for culture. But 
Um, his strength of one is a massive, massive problem. He takes cultural heritage, which I'm not a fan of at all. There is stuff that he needs to be doing. He needs to be upgrading his mines, his labs, and spending all this food so it doesn't get knocked away by rats. You always have to worry about rats. So he needs to be spending this food. And he only has four actions. In no way, shape, or form does this guy have two actions to spare to play cultural heritage for two signs. It's just not a thing. So this is where, even though in the beginning I kind of thought Texas was okay and Gohor was the person who was making some really weird plays, now I'm kind of thinking, okay, both of these players have some major weaknesses in their game. Anyway, he spends uh, an action with Masonry to build two stages of St. Peter's. He finally pays down the food to grow his population, and he steadfastly ignores these swordsmen, which would have been a great way to fix his strength, and instead grabs warfare, which also helps with your strength issues, but costs five science, and he only makes two. So yes, he's got the alchemy that he's he can maybe upgrade and eventually play it, but still, even with alchemy, this is an entire turn's worth of science production to play warfare. Swordsman is one science less and potentially is worth a lot more strength, so I do think that was a couple of mistakes. All right, go horse turn. He plays an event, obviously, and gets on certain borders, stealing a yellow token from a Texas's bank. He raises his population, upgrades a mine, and grabs engineering genius. Really not a fan of this play. I don't recommend it. He's spending two actions to get three rocks, which isn't even that amazing. He has stuff to do. He needs to upgrade his mines. Now, maybe if we're being generous, he was thinking, well, I could upgrade one mine and then I have one action left and nothing to do with it. But he could have played, see how he increases population? He could have played frugality when he did that. Then he'd have two extra food and then he could have used the three food to raise his population again. In my opinion, doing that would have been way better than taking these engineering, this engineering genius. Not only because he doesn't have a wonder under construction and it's a speculative play, but also because even if he had a wonder under construction, three rocks for two actions isn't even that amazing. It's also actually really frustrating because the age is about to end. So he's about to lose these two workers. So he should have really gotten another one out of there while he had the chance. Just a lot of mistakes on that turn. All right, so it's to me. Um, we finish the age, and um, I decide to raid Texas, because I can. So I break one of his buildings and get some free rocks. We're, we're also going to pause for a second, because age two has started, and just kind of take stock of where everybody is. We'll do that at the beginning of age three as well. So Kermit is sitting very pretty. He's fine on strength. He's amazing on culture. He's shooting off to a huge culture lead. If you compare it to everyone else, he makes the most culture. His main issue is he only has three mines. Now, you can finish the whole game on three mines. He also doesn't have much science. So he's looking to get this irrigation researched and upgraded to fix his food. He is looking to fix his science or find some way to live life without science and, of course, decide if he's going to live with three rocks or just, you know, ride it out because he has the most actions. He's amazing on actions and then just use yellow cards throughout the game to make up the rocks. It is a way that you can play it. Notice, by the way, this code of laws that he took that I complained about is just going to be sitting here for a while. So that was the one mistake that I think he made that was really significant. Texas is just playing with one strength, getting beat up by everybody, but he is going for Michelangelo, St. Peter's, and Hanging Gardens to get a bunch of culture. If he had raised his population earlier in the game, he would have had a worker, and then he would have had a temple here. Or did he do that, and I blew up the temple? Is that what I did? Did I blow up his temple? No, I blew up his lab. So yeah, he did not have his temple blown up, I don't think, so he just never got a temple. So had he had a temple, that would have been, you know, an extra three culture with Michelangelo and St. Peter's. Gohor had some bonehead plays early on. He took an, he took that urban growth card that he actually ended up discarding. So he literally threw away an action to play to take this card, and then didn't even play it. So he actually lost a rock and an action back when he took it. Okay, for me, oh Gohor, I should say, is decent on culture, good on strength, has science issues, and needs to fix his food. So. He is struggling in some areas, but at least he's not getting beat up. And then me, we've got good rocks, need to fix the food, great science. I'm also in a pretty good position. However, I am falling behind to Kermit, the one other player who knows how to play this game. Okay, so we research the iron. We start to upgrade these mines. 
Now you might say, Boris, maybe you should have researched irrigation and fixed your food. That is fair. I probably struggled a lot with that decision. So here with the last action, I grow my population because I had a convenient four food hanging around and then we end the turn. All right, so Kermit decides to beat up on Texas because Texas is there for the beating. He plunders him. Then he finally starts to work on his food. He, he researches irrigation, grows his population. He builds another theater for some more culture and he upgrades the farm, grabs an urban growth and upgrades his other farm. Bit of a strange move to build the theater before taking the urban growth, but he was limited in what he could really do here because none of these cards were either cards he could take or cards that were worth taking with his crappy science production. So a perfectly reasonable turn. He then grabs the phalanx instead of the medieval army to officially be definitely ahead of me on strength and passes the round. He is sitting very pretty with his culture and his strength. Texas finishes St. Peter's, takes reserves, plays cultural heritage for some reason, and lets Michelangelo sit there. He went through all this trouble getting beat up like crazy to get Hanging Gardens and St. Peter's and just isn't taking Michelangelo for one, two, three, four culture per turn. I don't understand this person. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. So yeah, definitely take Michelangelo if you've got Hanging Gardens and St. Peter's is the lesson of that story. Now, Gohor beats up on Texas with the Enslave and he finally researches monarchy, spending all of his science for it. He builds another lab now that monarchy is giving him an extra urban limit, which makes perfect sense. Grows his population. Now he plays frugality for some reason, though this two food is just draining his resources and accomplishing nothing. He finishes upgrading his final mine. He's still corrupt. And then he builds a temple, perhaps to avoid corruption and perhaps also just to get some culture. All right, so Gohor now seems to be playing a much more reasonable game. I would say that Gohor maybe has early game issues and Texas perhaps is the one who actually has some more serious game problems. I throw down an event. I'm not sure why I did that. I don't really need to be playing these events. Maybe, wow, did I, will this interface show me what I played? Um, yes, I could have seen it earlier. Maybe it was Iconoclasm. Yeah, because I saw I saw a Druid Iconoclasm. I don't know why I would have played that. But anyway, it seems like that's what I put in. So I grabbed the Legion tactic for all my military actions just to get an extra couple of strength. So now I'm at eight. I'm beating Kermit. So Kermit now needs one more strength to get his culture from Genghis. I grab Newton to continue with the science theme. I throw away Leo since I don't need the rocks anymore. I value Isaac Newton's free actions. We build another lab, so we're doing great on science, and we research irrigation as a free action, and we get started upgrading the food. All right, so Kermit's turn. He plays an event. I do have a discontent worker, which is crushing, so I lose two of my four civil actions the next turn, and he puts the Continental Railroad under construction, so it's an interesting move. Obviously, it's a big investment of actions, but... It is going to be generating an extra rock, so it pays itself off. And if he can get coal down, he's going to be doing amazing for rocks. Just getting this built and putting down coal will fix his rock problems completely. Now, I would not have done this, not just because it takes a lot of actions to put it under construction, but because building a 12 rock wonder when you're only making three rocks per turn is pretty tough to do. So high benefits but it's a big investment to get this accomplished it's not a move i would have made but as we'll see it's not necessarily a bad move he grabs patriotism and urban growth he doesn't really have much else to do with his actions and then we end the turn all right texas upgrades a lab upgrades a mine gets two food raises his population i don't know why he got two food he didn't need the food to raise his population and then he passes the turn. He is still just sitting here. A sitting duck for literally everybody to beat up as much as they want. And that's exactly what Gohor does. Now, these are H2 aggressions, so he's getting plundered even harder. However, Texas actually had two H2 defense cards, so he fought this off, which is good because he saved himself from losing a bunch of resources. That must have really pissed Gohor off. So now Gohor grabs selective breeding. Makes sense to finally fix his food issues. He disbands a warrior. 
builds a mine. I don't like this play at all. Yes, it's cool to make eight rocks instead of six, but six is enough. And I think getting rid of your military strength like that doesn't really make a lot of sense. He also grabs architecture. This is a move I disagree with because it costs six science. It's a very strong technology. Yes, it's cool to have everything be cheaper, but I mean, you are just getting your extra two rocks per turn. You don't need things to be that cheap. And when are you going to have six science? Your top priority is getting selective breeding to fix your food. So you're going deeper into action and science debt. And he grabs Conmon. This is I don't. This is another move I don't like. You already have monarchy. Getting con constitutional monarchy for one extra action of each type is really inefficient. And again, when are you going to have the science to do this? If it were me, then what I would have been doing here. I mean, I know that he didn't have a whole lot of stuff to take, so it might have just been like he felt like he didn't have anything that um, he could do. He couldn't research selective breeding because he didn't have the science for it. But honestly, like I would have friggin' taken the cannon for three actions than taking these random cards because that, as we'll talk about later, is extremely significant to have these military uh, technologies. And that could have actually made a difference for him later in his game. All right, so he grabs the fighting band to stay strong. Although I am suddenly now in the lead, drunk with power over here. I upgrade a mine, upgrade the other mine instead of upgrading the food. And then I lost two actions for that horrible rebellion event. So it's heartbreaking because if I had them, I would have definitely taken cannon here. We'll talk more about the military technology stuff later on. There will be a key moment in the game where that happens. All right. So now that Gohor knocked out Texas's defense cards, Kermit steals five science from him, which is heartbreaking for me to see because not only is Gohor or Kermit's science production low, so five science makes a really huge deal, but on top of that, it lets him play Cole this turn and he can also upgrade it this is going to make it easier for him to build the transcontinental railroad and then once he does his rock problems will be solved at that point he's going to have no weaknesses other than science in his pop civilization grabs team sports makes sense he will need the happy faces later on and there's not a whole lot else for him to do with his actions however this is in my opinion the single most crucial moment of the entire game when Kermit takes reserves instead of cannon. This is where we're going to have a little bit of a lengthy discussion. So when you play through the ages, I have a philosophy that military cards from H2, the cannon, the rifleman, and the horses are extremely significant. And the reason for that has to do with what everybody's motivations are. So let's imagine that you are behind on culture. What do you need to do to win the game? What are you going to do to maximize your chances of winning? Well, the answer is military. Because if you're behind on culture, then you can't really catch up to the other person on culture. Because if you invest all your stuff into making culture, then the person who's already winning on culture will invest all their resources into making culture. And they are already ahead of you. They're just going to stay ahead and you're going to lose the game. Unless that person has some kind of severe economic deficit, the cultural leader... But Kermit doesn't have that. He's fine on food. He's fine on rocks or will be. So he is not in some kind of economic deficit. If you just try to chase him on culture, then you're going to lose. So that means that the people who are behind want military, which means we now ask the question, if you're the culture leader, what do you want? And the answer is, again, military. You need military to protect your culture lead. If you do not stay competent on military, then someone who's behind you might get their military up and running and steal your culture with the war of culture later in age three. So no matter who you are, whether you're the culture leader or the culture loser, you want military. And that means you need these military <coughs> technologies in order to be able to get the age three tactics. Now there are age two tactics and I have won games relying entirely on the best age two tactics, notably the classic army and the, Neapol the Napoleonic army. And you can sort of make do with mobile artillery, but that's getting a little bit stretchy. So while it's possible to make do with the H2 tactics, the H2 military cards turn on all the tactics, whichever ones you need. He doesn't have cannon right now. If he'd gotten cannon, that would have opened up all of the tactics in the entire game that use cannon. But instead, he took reserves. Now, this is a normal move because you might think, okay, reserves. This helps me get my coal mines upgraded. Helps me get my wonder built. I'm fine on strength. I'm currently, you know, basically in the lead here. I'm about to get five strength from Transcontinental Railroad. But you have to think bigger than that. Don't just think, how do I stay equal on strength right now? 
you have to think, how am I going to make sure that I stay equal on strength later in the game when people's strength is going to be like in the 30s, 40s, or some games even higher? Here, it was like the biggest blunder of the game for Kermit to take the reserves instead of taking cannon when he had the chance. So watch as that decision has ripple effects all through the rest of this game. All right, so Texas plays an event for some reason. He's the loser. He should not be playing events. But anyway, we all get some free food. He grabs the Republic for some reason. He raises population. Fine. He builds a lab. Fine. He doesn't take cannon, which is crazy. But, you know, this guy has done crazier things. So we move on. All right, Gohor plays an event. We got Raiders. Texas and Kermit now are the two weakest players by tie breaks in Kermit's case. He grabs Scientific Method, which is an interesting play. It is aimed at fixing his science. However, I do think that a much bigger issue here is making sure that you get your military techs up and running because you only got your basic technology. And Joan's not going to stick around forever with her strength from these temples. I think he needed to be taking cannon at a minimum and rifleman too. That would have been, in my opinion, a better way to spend three actions than taking scientific method. Although, admittedly, he can't quite do that because he would be up against his hand limit. But he's up at his hand limit now. He researches scientific method and upgrades the lab to fix his science, leaving cannon and rifleman just sitting here. So I think everyone's taking crazy pills, but Kermit is the one who most suffers from it because he's the one with the most to lose. He's the cultural leader. For him, it was the most crucial mistake out of anybody to not be taking these military technology cards. So it's my turn now. Thank God I am not missing any civil actions this turn because boy, do I need them. We, <laughs> I, I try to tr trick Gohor into doing this. Obviously don't take the scientific cooperation pact with Newton. That's, that's a stupid idea. I grab the cannon and I grab the rifleman. Note this move. A lot of people would not take riflemen here because they think, oh, well, I've already got swordsmen. I don't need riflemen. That's inefficient. But that's actually one case where you have to ignore inefficiency. All the age two military attacks, in my opinion, are very significant because having access to the age three ta uh, tactics, almost all of which use infantry, is important. If you look at these tactics in age three, this one has infantry, this one, this one. This one, all of them except for literally this one, which there's two copies of, require infantry. So if you want to play any of them, you need the rifles. And of course, you might say, oh, but Boris, you can, you know, get the, the modern infantry. But the modern infantry is more expensive to research and to build. And yes, it has two extra strength. But who knows where that's going to be in the deck. Get the riflemen, especially if it's one action. I think you have to be under very special circumstances to have that not be the correct play. Hey, I grabbed the Constitution of Monarchy because I do need to fix my actions. I've been struggling along as, as a despot. We finally have the science to do it. So I research Kanmon. I even get it for free because of Newton. We grab Opera. This is one of those things where it's like, I mean, am I really going to do Operas? Probably not. Because I really need to win this game by military with how far behind I am on culture at this point versus Kermit. Look at this. Look at 36 plus 5 versus 15 plus 2. I actually think nowadays, if it were me, what I would have done with my last three actions is I would have just upgraded my last mine to take care of it and grown my population and played reserves. Also reasonable is to take patriotism because that's going to be important since military is the only way that I'm going to win this game. Here, I decide to do that part of it where I upgrade mine or upgrade farm and grow population, but I leave the patriotism sitting here. That's not the move I would make nowadays. I would have just let opera sit there. All right, so Kermit plays an event. He and I get some free rocks and or food. So he raises his population. He builds a team sports. He builds it pretty cheaply. It's not what I would have done. I don't think it was urgent for him to get these happy faces. I would have felt much more urgent about finishing this wonder. He grabs scientific method to fix the science down the line, which is a bit of a strange line. If you're going to spend five science researching the team sports, it seems like it makes sense to have done the scientific method instead. But it's hard to get this going because it does cost five rocks to upgrade a uh, HA lab to a scientific method, and he needs the rocks to be building this railroad. So a bit of a strange turn, but not anything super crazy. Biggest mistake, I think, was leaving these riflemen here. They're just here for the taking, and he does not take them, which makes sense intuitively. He is, after all, with this arena, 
the strength leader. So it might seem like, well, why do I need the rifleman? But again, keep an eye on that. Watch out for the repercussions. Well, Texas does one thing right. He does take the riflemen, he researches them, and he makes an upgrade. So now he's still not really quite safe from anybody, but at least with an H2 defense card, he can fight off aggressions. He grabs the wave of nationalism. So now it's like all of a sudden he's like, hey, military, I gotta do something about that. And he really gets to work on fixing that issue for himself. Now he's got no food middling science, no culture, no strength, no actions. This guy's in really rough shape. Gohor plays an event. We got border conflict. Kermit's now the strongest, so he stole that from me. Gohor plays nav takes navigation. You can see he's a bit card happy. I don't agree with this. Again, think about your action debt. Think about your science debt. He needs the science to play selective breeding so it's going to take more than a turn to get up to navigation. And is this really the most important thing to spend six science for a couple of strength and better colony grabbing? I don't think that that was the most significant thing for him to be doing. But he takes it. He upgrades a lab. So his science is terrific. He researches selective breeding. He gets his food online. And then he raises population. Honestly, apart from the navigation play, that was a very reasonable turn. And this guy... Considering what the early game was like, he's really gotten into shape. He's got good science, good rocks, and good food. But his military sucks as soon as Joan leaves, and he's not in any kind of position to build a better one. So that's his main weakness, in my opinion. He builds another warrior for some reason. Oh, to bring the Legion back and go into strength. So you'll notice that these players are doing very small potato stuff when it comes to military. They're like, oh, how do I get in the lead now so I can like take advantage of these good events? And that's fine. You do need to think about the short term, but it's also important to consider the long term with military, not just winning the horse race now, but making sure that by the end game, you're competitive. All right, so I decided to put the Eiffel Tower under construction. It's a bit of a strange move. I'm not sure that I would make that nowadays because opera is very similar to the Eiffel Tower, right? Eiffel Tower is four culture, a happy face. Opera is three culture and a happy face. It costs eight rocks. Eiffel Tower costs 13. This, of course, does cost seven science and a worker, but I've got unhappy workers sitting here, so I'm not really sure if that's really worth doing. If it were me now, I would have probably taken the cavalrymen here, maybe the revolutionary idea even, and just spent this food getting the workers, maybe played this reserves before it got kicked out by the ending of H2. I don't think I would have built the Eiffel Tower. But here, you know, it's a sexy move. I just build the whole thing and take it in one turn. So now I'm getting six culture. But notice the problem. Even with six culture, I'm still behind Kermit. He's making five culture, and he already has like an almost 30 culture lead. So... It's one of those things where it's not really doing a whole lot. I saved the seven science for the military technologies, but I would have rather just taken revolutionary idea for four science. Taking and playing this is less actions than building the Eiffel Tower, and it would have let me use opera if that was something that I wanted to do. Now we got frugality. We're just barely not corrupt. And the turn ends. All right, so Kermit goes. He grabs national pride for an extra five culture. And he takes Bach. So now he really pops off with these two theaters and Bach. He's suddenly generating for culture that's not contingent on him being the strongest leader. Grabs science, which makes sense. A one-action revolutionary idea is disgusting. He finishes the Transcontinental Railroad, so now his rocks are totally fine. And he turns a temple into a theater, which is an extra two culture with Bach. So this is just, you know, an absolutely insane situation if we could take a moment to appreciate it. Kermit. Obviously a very strong player. Look at where he is. He is only got one issue, which is science, but he makes eight rocks per turn and he's got scientific method and revolutionary idea in hand, so he is ready to fix that. He is the clear leader on culture, making more culture than anybody else. And he has a huge culture lead. If we just compare resource to resource, I mean, his food is fine. His rocks are the top. His culture's way the top. He almost has as much culture as all the rest of us combined. And then science is the one issue and he's ready to fix it. So this guy is dominating. But what's his one problem? He didn't take rifle when he had the chance. He didn't take cannon when he had the chance. And he didn't take cavalry when he had the chance. He is saying, well, I'm in the lead now, commandingly. So I'm not worried about these military technologies. Why would I need them? Well, again, keep an eye on that. Texas throws an event for some reason. 
Iconoclasm that I put in there pops, and Joan of Arc goes away a little earlier than usual. He grabs Robespierre, plays him, and I guess that was the Republic. Now he researches the Republic, so he fixes his civil actions finally. He grabs journalism, which is a very ambitious undertaking. Selective breeding, organized religion, you know, everything other than the cavalrymen that were there for one action that were really crucial for him to have his military strong. So, you know, this guy... I think turns out to probably be the weakest player of the game, even though Gohor looked to take that title at the beginning. All right, again, we have immigration. I don't mind this one. I don't mind losing a worker. It's certainly better than losing two actions. Gohor playing strong here, taking the cavalrymen that are here, letting these fall off the map so nobody can benefit from them. He develops navigation. He upgrades his lab, so he's going huge on science, fixes his food. His resources are terrific. He's got science, rocks, food, everything in tip-top shape. He got cavalrymen, so he can sort of fix his military, and then he'll efficient upgrade, though I don't know what he's planning to upgrade with that. He didn't have much else to take, and his turn ends. All right, on my turn, I'm a little worried about Kermit here. Colony pit flips up. Kermit wins it, which is great. That means he's not going to be able to do any kind of aggressions on me. So here we grab strategy because I am in full military mode here. The only way I'm going to win is to catch up on strategy and military actions are very important. So it might seem crazy to spend three actions for strategy, especially since we're near the end of H2. And of course, there's a couple of copies of military theory in H3, but military actions are a big deal. And you don't know when that military theory is going to be in the deck. Not only do military actions let you draw more cards, increasing the likelihood of getting war on culture, if that's what you need to win the game, but they also like are relevant if you think about the total number of actions that you need in order to build up an army. So that is something I, I really kind of undervalued for a long time, but if you're really trying to win on strength, four actions to build your army, play your tactics, and actually declare the war and still have enough to draw cards is not going to cut it. So this is a move I would still make. I'm way behind Kermit. I have no chance of winning on culture. We've got to go into full military mode. So I research the strategy now. Get cannon down. Play the reserves from age one before they disappear. Grow my population a couple of times. And to avoid corruption, I make a cannon. Now, I don't have a right tactic for it, but that's okay. It, it, oh, I do. I do have the double cannon tactic. So I actually make another cannon and put that down. So now I'm in the lead and everyone now has to be afraid of me. And I would also like to infiltrate Kermit if he slips and doesn't fix his military strength. Though it's unlikely he would do that. Yeah, he builds back his phalanx. Of course, it's pretty cheap to do that. So now it would be a risk to try to do that. Especially with him having five actions, he would just need one defense card to pull it off. Anyway, he plays scientific method. He finally gets the science up and running, raises his population, and his science is perfect. So now I could risk trying to infiltrate away Bach, but it's a big risk because he just needs a single defense card and then he defends against it. So I probably did not do that. All right, Texas Instruments at four, plays Wave of Nationalism, grabs cannon for three actions after not taking riflemen or cavalrymen for one action. He's like, oh shit, I gotta take care of this. So he makes his cannon, builds a cannon, Builds another rifleman. Does he have the tactic? Does he have the tactic? He has the tactic. He's fine. Wow. After the whole game of getting beat up on, he finally fixes his military. Gets another mine up there. Builds another lab. So his rocks are fine. His mines are fine. His army's fine. He's got selective breeding ready to go. Look at this printing press that he took in age one. It's about to get dumped. And we're going on to age three. All right. So taking a moment here to pause and discuss what's happening in age three. Kermit, fine on military, culture leader by far, makes a ton of culture, his science is fine, his rocks are fine, his food is fine. So this guy's going to win the game, unless someone beats him on military. So everyone needs to be focused on military to beat him, which means that he needs to be focused on military to make sure that he doesn't lose. So that's why if he had spent those actions taking cannons, rifles, maybe even cavalry earlier would have put him in a much better situation now because now he's kind of vulnerable. Once people get the higher end tactics online, he's not going to be able to keep up with this technology. Texas, the joker of the game, he is 
fine on resources, but he, and he's actually okay on culture. Like he's not really far behind me on culture. He's fine on actions. He actually kind of got his shit together by the end of H2. He needs to get selective breeding down and upgrade these farms. And then, you know, he can keep on playing. Gohor, having lost Joan, is all of a sudden now a weak player militarily. He does at least have cavalry though. So he might be able to fix his army. And then me, I got the Eiffel Tower. I am okay on culture, but I'm just so far behind Kermit, I'm in full military mode. So like, even though H3 just started, it was even before H3 began that I was like, all right, my entire goal in life is to get an H3 tactic, get it online, and then kill Kermit with a war. That's the only thing I'm focused on. So like this opera that I took, it was just a waste. There was really no chance that that was ever going to be a good thing to play. All right, so oopsie, we're going to need to click back to Gohor over here. So he develops the cavalry, he builds a cavalry, he raises population to avoid the rebellion, grabs the phalanx, so he's sort of not too far behind, and then frugality and engineering genius. I personally would have taken the breakthrough, even though he has a lot of science. Engineering genius is a bit speculative. I mean, when's he going to build a wonder? He needs to get his military up and running. Nothing. this is a bad play, but my personal preference would have been for the three free science. All right, so on my turn here, we're just in one mode. We're just trying to uh, get military. I decide to try a raid against Gohor, but he did draw an H3 defense card, so it doesn't work. I take religion, which is a huge boon that it's here because I do need to fix my happy faces pretty significantly. Luckily, it was there. I fix my happy face issues now with a few actions to spare. I decide to build a swordsman and put ocean liner under construction. Now, this is a bit of a ballsy move. I'm not sure I would make this move again. But my thinking is that I can do this next turn and then still benefit from it. If you're already in H3 and you still haven't finished the ocean liner, as cool as it is to get, you know, an, a free worker every turn, it doesn't leave as much time in the game to do that as if you had gotten this built in H2. So it's a bit of a risky line. At this point, instead of building the ocean liner, like if I were playing the game, I might consider just grabbing, you know, science and rocks. Although, if you look at this game, you would end up seeing that uh, the Ocean Liner does come in handy. So I'm not actually sure it was a mistake for me to do that. Maybe it was a risky move that I had to take because I was so far behind Kermit that I had to try going for it. All right, Kermit grabs the breakthrough and finally takes the cannon. He grabs Justice System because I guess he doesn't have that much else to really be doing with his time. He researches those cannons and builds one to up his strength. He also grabs some science. All, I think, very reasonable plays. All right, so Texas does a bit of spying against Gohor, who was vulnerable after spending his cards to defend my aggression. After stealing that science, he grabs urban growth and efficient upgrade. He grabs the reserves. He grabs computers. I don't know why he took computers here. I think I would have just researched selective breeding and upgraded these farms so he could start getting more workers. But he decides to fix his science it's, you know, whatever. So Gohor goes, he finally develops this architecture that he had a long time ago after upgrading all of his buildings. He plays Bill Gates. So now he's making crazy science. If you don't recall, Bill Gates makes science or rocks equal to, each lab makes rocks equal to its level. So now this is an extra six rocks that he's making, which is kind of cool. And he takes the rockets so that he can maybe get a military at some point. It's a bit of a shame he wasn't really in a position to take space flight because that would have obviously been very nice since he has all the science he could have gotten a lot of researches now i do pull off another aggression and this time gohor does not have the defense so i managed to destroy two of his buildings and it's an h3 raid so he is going to lose two of his labs which is obviously a blow because that's not just science production for him but also rock production and i get eight rocks for my trouble so i grab the tanks which is actually uh, significant for me because I didn't get cavalrymen. Those just never quite came around for me during age two. And here we grab chaplain. I honestly don't know why I did that, to be perfectly honest with you. I think, again, if it were me, I would have just focused on building the ocean liner and getting my military up and running. But I do get the ocean liner done this turn. We get our free rays from the ocean liner. Oh, right. Maybe the chaplain move, I think, is not to try to actually make him with opera, though I may have been thinking about that at the time. It's mostly like with chaplain, you have to remember that, um, you know, just 
two free happy faces is, is pretty good. Even if you're getting zero culture from the guy, I mean, it's not amazing, but two happy faces. So you have two extra workers to devote to your army. It's solid. So yes, I think I would still make that play again if I were in this situation. Now, I also drew another war over culture. So now if I can get a big lead, then I will be ready to take on Kermit. All right, Kermit is watchful of his military somewhat. He does take military theory, but notice that he does not take modern infantry. So he closes himself out of all the age three tactics. Most of the tactics in the game, frankly, have infantry in them, and he's closed out of all of them because he didn't get swordsmen either. So I do think that was an error. He leaves that B, he goes for cannon. So because I have the defensive army in here or the um, fortifications, he can now use that with his cannons. So maybe he was thinking that would be good enough and just, you know, don't need to go too super crazy in the military. I can just, you know, be good enough to not fall too far behind and I'll be fine. So it's something to keep an eye on in this game. I think it's one of the big lessons from it is that just being fine on military might not be good enough. You really need to push it if you're the culture leader because everyone who's behind you, if they're a good player, will be pushing it themselves. All right, anyway, there's a colony here. Texas grabs democracy. I'm not going to spend too much time analyzing all of uh, Texas and Gohor's moves here because it's really between me and Kermit at this point. So he upgrades his labs, grabs rockets and modern infantry, grabs a bunch of junk. All right, he's making a bunch of science. Yes, but he doesn't have space flight or Einstein, so it's not really doing anything. Gohor uh, takes modern infantry so he can fix some of his strength issues. He gets up there. He builds, builds a cavalry man. And he's up to, you know, fine. So he's not going to be, uh, he's, he, he could theoretically defend if he has a defense card in here from my aggressions. And I declare war on Kermit. It is time to do it. So here, the way it works is I grab the Air Force. I research Air Force. I grab the reserves for the future. And another reserves for the future. Age three reserves cards, in case you don't know, by the way, are very, very valuable. And I put down chaplains so that I've got the happy faces since I'm about to get a worker out of here, which would have been a non-happy worker. But because it is a happy worker, now what I can do is actually, with my 14 rocks, make two air forces. So what's happening here is I've got two tactics, two of these defensive armies, and both of them are upgraded by air forces. So now I've got 51 strength. So this opera, that was not the correct move. There was no point. I was never going to make enough culture with Opera to catch up to this massive lead that Kermit has. Instead, I got a whopping 51 strength. And this is why it's important to grab the age 2 military technologies. If you're playing against someone who knows what they're doing and they're behind you on culture, this is the kind of thing that they're going to do. Now, granted, I was lucky because there were players here. Like, I got to blow up two of Gohor's labs and get eight free rocks. Obviously, those eight free rocks were significant. It would have been difficult for me. Well, it would have been impossible to get two armies and two air forces and build the ocean liner and have these workers to do all this if it wasn't for the fact that there was someone here that I could beat up. But that's kind of the point. If you are the culture leader, this is how you can lose. So you've got to make sure that you keep that hole closed. If Kermit had just given up a few resources in exchange for having riflemen and cavalrymen, he'd be in much better shape to defend against this whopping 51 strength war that's all of a sudden coming his way halfway through H3. All right, so Kermit is under attack. He gets military theory. He gets the modern army, though it is outdated. So this is seven strength, not 13. He grazes population, plays reserves, raises population some more. And he actually manages, by blowing up one of his mines, to get two outdated versions of the modern army. Now, this is unfortunately for him, giving him only 14 strength instead of 26 strength. But hey, 40 strength is not bad. With this culture lead, he can still win the game even after this war. So he has to hope at this point that I don't have another war over culture. All right, Texas gets modern infantry for some reason. I don't know why he already has the riflemen. He needed the tanks because that would have been better to research than modern infantry since that would have given him a new type of unit. But he upgrades those riflemen. He grabs revolutionary idea, finally gets selective breeding down and gets one of them upgraded, takes tanks, but doesn't research it because he got modern infantry for some reason. He plays three food and takes multimedia. These are, I mean, these are just random moves. I don't have much to say at this point. He's, you know, basically, in my opinion, out of the game, but that's what he did. Okay, so Gohor, with his army now 
grabs the classic army, so he's getting an eight strength boost. He grabs the air forces. He can't research them yet, but he builds an AJ lab and he upgrades to bring back the labs that I destroyed. He unfortunately will still not be able to research air forces next turn. So what I would have done in his shoes is I would have taken revolutionary idea so that he could research air forces next turn. Military theory is a tough sell here because yes, it's great, but when are you going to have the science to get it and the air forces? The answer is... Okay, so he actually, I forgot, he, he builds another lab. So yes, he can get one of these next turn and one of them the following turn. All right, so for me, oh, that wasn't a war over culture, beg your pardon. That was a war over territory. So I was trying to like blow out his population bank. And I did steal three population from him, which with my um, ocean liner is really, really valuable to have. So now Kermit is going to be a little bit strained for population after I stole those workers from him. Did I hitch it? I did not. All right, everyone passes on this hilariously. Obviously, I'm not going to spend any of my precious workers to get a colony. I grab some science. I research riflemen. And what I have my eye on here is... Oh, I can't look at my hand. Okay, I have the, I have the um, same tactic that Kermit has here, the modern army. So if I can get tanks, two tanks plus upgrading all my workers means I actually have two instances of the modern army, just like Kermit does, except mine will not be out of date. So I'm trying to get that done and get this war declared. And this is where you have to count your actions and your rocks very carefully, but I have just enough to do it. Just enough military actions and science and rocks to actually research the tanks, build the tanks, upgrade all of these, and have enough military actions left over to actually declare the war. So you have to count that very, very carefully. This patriotism is actually absolutely critical and probably shouldn't have been there for free as a single action. But now the snake is coiled and ready to spring. Kermit, who may or may not know what is coming to him, plunders Texas, because why not? He develops computers, upgrades the computers, grabs Sid for some culture. It's It makes sense. Even if you know what's coming at you, there's not much you can really do about it at this point. He plays revolutionary idea and justice system and just hopes that I don't have a war of culture in my hand. Texas gets the tanks. He gets some science, also gets rockets for some reason and the fast food wonder and then passes the turn. Gohor here has tons of rocks, but not enough time to do anything with them. We have an economic progress pop. So he gets the air forces and with enough population growth, he can make an airplane and now actually have a decent amount of strength. He also grabs the movies for some reason. I guess that's a way to spend these rocks in the final turn and he passes it. So now I declare a war over culture on Kermit and this is going to be the big one. We play the revolutionary idea to have enough science to research tanks. We play the uh, patriotism to have enough time uh, actions to do the tanks. I play the reserves because I need these rocks. We play the tanks, we make two tanks, and then notice that we have enough actions left over to play the modern army. So I guess I didn't actually need the extra action from patriotism, but since I have it, and since that economic progress event flipped up, I'm actually able to build another tank just for funsies, but that was not actually necessary. I would not have had that extra tank, but the key thing, which is having two modern armies and two airplanes and being able to declare the war, that I had planned enough rocks and actions for. So it's not always that you're going to get up to a ludicrous strength of 98. But if there's one lesson from this game, that's what it is. If you're the culture leader, you've got to make sure that you get those military to, to uh, the uh, military technologies from age two, because that's how you avoid losing the game. Now, Kermit does steal some culture from Texas, who reprises his role as the whipping post. He develops professional sports and upgrades for a little bit of extra strength. He upgrades a lab to get more culture from Sid. He builds the space flight for a 23-point bomb, and he's got a lot of culture. If we take a look at the situation here, he's got 167 culture. That's more than double anybody else. It's almost as much as everybody else combined. But the problem is that someone with 98 strength declared a war over culture on him. Texas rounds out his turn doing irrelevant things. Gohor rounds out his turn oh he offers me a peace treaty so we each make an extra culture he builds some movies with all of his rocks 
and he disbands an air force to, to avoid rebellion, which is funny. And for my final turn, I steal 61 points from Kermit. And at this point, it's just kind of wrapping things up. There's nothing really much for me to do. I build a temple for some culture. Here's where I actually would have used, you know, a uh, an opera to be able to get some culture. But alas, the opera had fallen out of my hand. I'm building this because I think I put Age of Com or Competition in there. So I'm ending with a somewhat hilarious 111 strength. More than everybody else combined. And now we get to the final scoring. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe. There's only two events that got put in here. Impact of Science and my impact of competition for a stupid 33 points. Now, not all my games go this way, it must be noted, but uh, this one happened to have a very dramatic finish with 111 strength and a 61 point culture steal. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Main takeaway for me from this one, Kermit, very strong player, had a really great age one and age two, and would have won the game if he had just spent two actions to take cannon instead of spending two actions to take a reserves, and also if he had not passed on the cavalry and the infantry, or the, or the riflemen that were sitting there in the one action row. Had he taken those, he could have had an up-to-date modern army, and while he might necess not necessarily have been able to get the big army that I did, he might have been able to get a big enough army that I wouldn't have been able to steal 60 points from him. Had I only stolen, you know, 30 points from him instead of 60, he would be the one winning this game.